All right, let's get started. Good afternoon. Welcome to the webinar, Six Ways to Go Green and Keep It Clean When Preventing Rust. So I'm Kristen Moore. I'm a project manager here at Armor Protective Packaging, and it's my voice you're going to hear for the next 30 minutes. And my co-host today is Ryan, who's our industrial sales manager. He's going to be manning that question box that we just practiced. So any time throughout this webinar, if you have a question, feel free to just type it right into that question box and he'll get you an answer. So for some of you, you might be very familiar with Armor, but for others, you might need a little reintroduction to Armor. So we make a rust prevention and rust removal product, but our purpose is to protect your brand, your customer's brand, your parts, your customer's parts, and most importantly, your reputation. And how we do it, well, we make clean, safe and easy rust prevention and rust removal products. And we call ourselves the eradicators of rust. And our secret weapon to fight rust is VCI, that vapor corrosion inhibiting nanotechnology. We also have a rust removal product, which is Metal Rescue Rust Remover Bath, that's in over 9,000 retail locations in the United States, including locations in Canada. So that's AutoZone and Home Depot and Canadian Tire. But what I think you might find most interesting is that second bullet point from the bottom of your screen, over 90% of Fortune 500 industries, well, they rely on Armour products. All right, so here's how we're gonna break down the webinar today. First, we're gonna talk about six ways Armour goes green. And really what I mean by that are these are six ways you are going green by using Armour products. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about why bio-based and compostable plastics are not the answer. And then we're going to talk about, well, what is clean, safe, and easy rust prevention? All right, so let's get right into it. So the six ways that armor goes green. So to be clear, before I start and get into these six ways, I want to say that armor is not claiming to have the silver bullet to save the environment. There is a long way to go for that for all of us. What we are saying in this webinar is that we want to be part of the solution, and we work as hard at being an outstanding steward to our Earth as anything else we do. However, there's so much talk about the environment these days, it can be a little confusing, and we like to try and clear a few things up. So here are the six ways that Armour goes green, or the six ways that you go green when you use Armour products. The first one is Armour products are recyclable, and I'm starting with the easiest way. You know this, and I know this, recycling is one of the best ways to positively impact the environment and help our human race. Recycling helps to reduce pollution caused by waste. It reduces the need for raw materials to be used. So we say when you are finished using Armour products, recycling them. Because recycling one ton of paper, such as Armour wrap, saves 17 mature trees, 7,000 gallons of water, three cubic yards of landfill space, two barrels of oil, and the energy equivalent of 165 gallons of gasoline. So if you want more information on how to recycle Armour products, feel free to type that in the question box to Ryan. He'll connect you with your local technical sales manager to discuss your recycling options. All right, reason number two is recycled content is money well spent. Okay, so what do I mean by recycled content? Well, in project manager terms, I just call it the stuff or what makes up the product that you are buying. It's made from something that's recycled. So recycled content is the stuff that makes up the product you are buying is made from recycled material or what we call recycled content. So by 2020, we expect to have a minimum of 30% post consumer recycled content in all Armour Poly BCI films. So now you might be asking yourself, well, what is post consumer content? So to understand that, let me tell you first what's pre consumer content. So pre consumer content is the waste that's sitting over in a plant while you make a product. So here's an easy way to think of it. I like to think about it as cookie dough. So I'm making a batch of cookies and I roll that dough out and I cut out the different shapes in the dough. And then I take all those little scraps and I shove them all together and I re-roll them out to make more cookies so I use up all my dough. That's pre-consumer content. Now the bigger deal is post-consumer content. So now through our manufacturing partners, we are bringing back to us the poly that's been used 
And then with the advances in technology, it can be cleaned, it can be reused, and then we are able to provide you with VCI films that contain post-consumer content. So again, with the advances in technology, the price does not increase, so you can have the same quality material and you do something good for the environment. And the price doesn't increase because as recycled resin continues to improve, improve in cleanliness and it gains more and more ground each year, recycled content just makes enormous sense. So we are at Armor utilizing recycled content in our products and our films whenever possible. All right, the third way that you get to go green by using Armor products is the fact that source reduction saves oil production. So what do I mean when I use the term source reduction? Well, in project manager terms, source reduction is you get the same result from your product, but you use less energy to make it. So here's an example that I think you all might be familiar with. It is a light bulb. Now, look at the left-hand side of your screen. I want you to think about an old or traditional light bulb. Technically, I think they call that an incandescent bulb. When you use that light bulb, you got light, but you would give off from that light bulb 90% of its energy as heat, not light. Now with the improvements in technology, out come LED light bulbs. So look at the right-hand side of your screen. Because they don't waste the same amount of energy, they use 80% less energy than traditional light bulbs. So at the end of the day, you still get light, you're just getting your light much more efficiently. Now we did the same thing with film. So in 2005, Armour was the first CCI manufacturer to use an innovative engineering to bring multi-layer or co-extruded film to the market, and we call that the Defender. So take a look at the pictures now on your screen. Look at the left-hand side. That's that traditional VCI mono film. And for lack of a better word, the VCI is just everywhere in the film, which means about 70% of the VCI isn't even used. Now look at the right-hand side of your screen. With that new technology, or using the concept of source reduction, on the right, you see the Defender film. 25% less material is used for a few different reasons. One, we only put VCI where you need it. So we put VCI in that first layer of the film, that layer that's closest to the metal part. And then we've added a unique barrier layer. And then that allows us to down gauge the film by 25 to 30%. Now, if you don't know what I mean by down gauge of the film, or if you're kind of familiar with this concept, what we say about Defender is that it's a three mil with a four mil EQ. It is just a fancy way of saying with the technology we're using, you can use three mil thickness of the film, but you get the same result as a four mil film. So Defender is just like that LED light bulb. We're using better technology or source reduction at its finest. So if you'd like more information on what is this Defender film, what's this multi-layer film that puts VCI close to the metal, then just type the word Defender in the box to Ryan and he will send you the sheet on the Defender film. All right, so so far in this webinar, you might be thinking, yeah, 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 I know recycling is good. I know recycled content's good. I even get how LED light bulbs work, and that's good. But here's where things start to get a little bit industry. Because in this industry, you will start to hear a lot of buzzwords around things like biodegradable, and compostable plastics. At first glance, you might start to think, well, this sounds great. But I want you to jot down something. And that's the biodegradable stable. And as Jacqueline McGlade, a chief scientist at the UN, put it so well, biodegradable plastics, while well-intentioned, they're just wrong. And that's because biodegradable and combustible plastics don't work well in these three misleading ways. The first is landfill. Biodegradable polymer-based films, they require a high temperature and a high amount of sunlight to actually biodegrade. And in our current landfill, these are just unrealistic conditions. So that bag that you think might be biodegrading somewhere, well, it isn't. But then the bad part is, look at the right-hand side of your screen. It is trying to break down because most of these bags are still made with a petrochemical or these other chemicals that are trying to cause the plastic to break down. So because of that, even though they're not breaking down well in a traditional landfill, if they're exposed to the right conditions in manufacturing, you can't really recycle them. 
And then the third way that biodegradable fables are, or biodegradable plastic is misleading is the fact that because of those chemicals, they are trying to break down. Sometimes smaller pieces of plastic do break off that plastic bag, and that is a threatening to the wildlife, it's threatening to the organisms that consume them. So here's just a little fun fact or interesting thing is that if someone's saying to you, well, we have bio-based film, and especially if they're saying we have this cost-effective bio-based plastic, well, then that's most likely unrealistic, and you're being what we call in the industry greenwashed. Greenwashing is just a marketing technique that companies use to falsely claim to be environmentally friendly when that product really isn't. So if someone says to you, oh, I have this cost-effective biodegradable plastic, you can say, oh, no. I know that you're greenwashing me. All right, number five, and now we're taking it back to what I like to call middle school of science. Paper is a renewable resource. And what's a renewable resource? Well, it's in the name. It's something that this world can regenerate. Now, before I go too further in this webinar, I kind of want to pause here and say, I think for those of us who are old enough, we've all taken a little trip on what I call the renewable resource train. And here's an example of it. At first, everyone was told to use paper bags at a grocery store. And then we stopped. We weren't supposed to use paper bags, and then we all started using plastic bags at a grocery store to take our groceries home. And then when we were getting used to plastic bags, they said, oh, no, 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 paper bags come back on the scene. And this is because of what we said earlier. There is really no silver bullet to save the environment. And sometimes the right thing to do, well, it does change. But right now, what we know is that paper is made from wood, and wood is a natural resource that is renewable and recyclable. And we also know that paper sustainability in the U.S. has increased in paper making technology. We know that over 2.5 billion trees are planted in the U.S. each year alone, and that over 65% of the paper that's used in the U.S., well, it's recovered from recycling. So as technology improves, not only are we using this renewable resource, but even the pulp and paper mills use of energy has decreased in the improvement of technology. So using paper means that you are using that renewable resource. And then the sixth way that we go green is what we like to call Armour's Green Thumbs. And that's because we say we're not new to the green movement. We've always made products that are clean, safe, and easy to use. And in a few minutes, I'm going to talk about what clean, safe, and easy means to Armour. But it starts with using water-based technology. Yep, I said water. So whether it's Armour's VCI nanotechnology, which is our secret formula for vapor corrosion, or it's our water-based rust remover, which sounds crazy, but yes, we remove rust using a water-based rust remover. All Armour products have to be clean, safe, and easy before they hit the market. I think the best way to describe this is what I like to call my green versus unclean slide. So on the slide that you're looking at right in front of you, we have three items that we call green. So let's start on the left-hand side. So the first one is dry coat rust preventative spray. That's a rust preventative spray that you spray on. It dries to the touch within 30 minutes. It doesn't leave any type of sticky, oily, greasy residue. That is our green product. And we say, use that instead of what's behind it, grease. Now look right in the middle of your screen, we have Armor Wrap which is VCI technology infused into craft paper, use that to protect your metal parts from rusting instead of what's behind it, that old fashioned traditional rust preventative oil. And then on the right hand side of your screen, you see Metal Rescue Rust to Remover Bath. And you can see the picture, Metal Rescue Rust Remover Bath is so safe that you can stick your hand into it. And we say that to use Metal Rescue Rust Remover Bath to remove rust instead of any harsh acids. Um, also, just a little side note, if you're coming back from a shutdown, you think you might be seeing some rust after a shutdown, and you want to learn more about how you remove rust with Metal Rescue, just reach out in that question box to Ryan and say, hey, send me some information about Metal Rescue Rust Remover Bath, or just type Metal Rescue Rust Remover right in that question box. He'll know what you need, and he'll get you some information on that rust remover. Now at Armour, we also call ourselves authentic, and I did not say that incorrectly. That is a combination of the word being authentic and being fun. So what we've made for you to take some of these six ways Armour goes green and some additional information about VCI and about bio-based and compostable plastics is what we call natural science. 
And if you're familiar with the magazine Popular Science, this is just our authentic take on that and we call it Natural Science. So if you want a physical copy of this magazine or an electronic version sent to you to get a little bit more information, then just type in that question box to Ryan, Natural Science, and he will get that sent out to you. Now, before we go on too far, I want to make sure that we fully understand that biodegradable fable. That was point number four. So I bumped out kind of a few more slides to talk about that biodegradable fable. So now let's ask the president of our company, our rust slayer, our professor of VCI, tell us again why bio-based and compostable plastics are not the answer. But before I tell you the answer, I do want to say this. And some people might be thinking, what are bio-based and compostable plastics? So before I tell you they're not the answer, let me tell you what they are. Bio-based plastics are usually made from some sort of a biomass source. So start to think like vegetable fat, oils, cornstarch, wood, recycled food and waste. And then compostable plastics mean that they're supposed to be able to turn back into carbon and water and a biomass source. So when I use those terms, that's what I'm talking about. And I also wanna say this before I get too far. We're saying that bio-based and compostable plastics are not the answer for our customers right now. We all want bio-based film. And one day at Armor, we fully believe that this can be achieved in a cost-effective manner. But the industry and typical options that are presented to you, well, they're just not there yet right now. And not only are those options not there yet, what makes us nervous is that we start to see legislation calling for a certain amount of bio-based plastics, and we want to be able to say at Armour, yes, we have those, but when we say we make a bio-based and compostable plastic, we want to be able to mean that, and we also want it to be an affordable solution for our customers. So while we think it's achievable, what is being said on the market right now, when people are saying they have bio-based and compostable cost-effective material, well, that's just not true. And that's because of these things that we just talked about. And I'm going to start at the bottom, work my way up. Again, most bio-based cost-effective plastics on the market are just not that. They are not biodegradable. They are not compostable. And if they are, because there are some that are out there, well, those are incredibly expensive. We're talking four times the cost of a similar product. And then the last two points, we haven't really even touched on those when it comes to being green. To make bio-based plastics right now, you need a large amount of energy to produce those, and you need a large amount of land resources to produce that. And again, just to reiterate one more time, because I really want to drive this point home, for compostable plastics, for that to even start to break down, you need high temperatures, the proper combination of oxygen and moisture, you need specific organisms around that bag, and it's difficult for them to compost, and because of that, you cannot recycle them in any typical methods. You lack the infrastructure for those. And then if they are out there right now, they're just contaminating those traditional recycling streams. So we are happy to say at Armor, our products are these things. They are clean, they are safe, and they are easy. And then you might be asking yourself, okay, well, really, what do they mean by that? What's clean, safe, and easy? So we broke down those three words that mean so much to us into three different categories what's clean, safe, and easy for your people, what's clean, safe, and easy for your facilities, and then the one in the middle, what's clean, safe, and easy for the environment. So what do we mean when we say clean, safe, and easy for people, especially when it comes to VCI? Well, here's a little fun fact or tidbit about VCI that I think really drives that point home. VCI, for those of you who don't know, it was actually started right around the 1940s, and that concept of VCI was because we didn't want to send metal or guns overseas during World War II to guys that were out in the field that were covered with rust preventative oil because we wanted them to be able to grab that metal or grab that gun and get to work right away. And we want that for your people too. Could be a little bit less dramatic than World War II, but nonetheless, we want the people in your plants to be able to work with the metal right away. So if you look at the right-hand side of your screen, VCI and Armor products are easy to use. That bullet point on the right, once removed from packaging, Metal Rescue, well, it's ready to use. Now work your way back to the middle underneath safe, when we say safe, we mean it. We want you to eliminate those messy oils, those RP oils, that grease, those solvent-based chemicals. 
because those are not safe for your people. And when it comes to clean, we say it's simple storage and handling of VCI packaging materials. They're clean, they're dry, and they're easy to use. Now, when we talk about your facility, a big one that comes up with safety managers is clean means using VCI to eliminate spills and accidents. And again, I'm talking about those messy rust preventative oils. RP oils are horrible for your facility. Yes, they're horrible for people, they're horrible for the environment, but they're horrible for your facility and your facility floor. And spills on the floor are the number one reason safety managers want to switch from RP oils to VCI solutions for rust prevention. So at this point, if you want to speak with Ryan or speak with your technical sales manager about how do you transition from using those RP oils to using a VCI solution, then just type that in the question box to Ryan. And just, you can say RP oil, you can say tr transition to VCI, he'll know what you're looking for. And you can talk about how you go from that transition of using that messy, unsafe RP oil to using a clean, safe, and easy VCI solution. And then last is, what do we mean by clean, safe, and easy for the environment? Well, I think this entire webinar could sum up what we mean when we say clean, safe, and easy products for the environment. Using Armour products means you are reducing pollution, reducing waste, reducing energy expense, reducing the creation of raw materials. You know it's safe because Armour products are water-based and what's easier than using BCI. And before I turn this over to Ryan for any questions, if you've heard me say the words VCI a lot and you're curious about what do I mean by VCI, then just type the words VCI in the box to Ryan and he will connect you with your either technical sales manager, technical training about VCI, maybe a link to one of our webinars that talk about VCI, and you'll be able to learn a little bit more about VCI technology. But at this point, I've seen a lot of questions come through. I'd like to turn it over to Ryan to be able to start answering some of those questions we've seen today and then some of the questions we've been asked on previous webinars. Thanks, Kristen, and thank you to everybody for taking uh, 30 minutes or so with us this afternoon. I uh, hope you're walking away learning a little something about uh, an area that can be kind of confusing and a little murky at times going green. Uh, it's pretty generic. So hopefully we help maybe define it a little bit, at least in the packaging rust preventatives space. Um, what we like to do on these webinars is send out a cool swag bag to everyone on the webinar who wants one. So uh, we're going to send uh, some armor gear, maybe some armor socks, maybe an armor mask, maybe an armor t-shirt, uh, along with some of the brochures that we had talked about. Um, if you could put your physical address in that question box, there's some people on this um, webinar that asked for metal rescue samples. There's some people that asked for the Natural Science magazine. We want to send those physical copies out. If you could put your physical address, and if you're like Kristen and I working from home, put your home address in there. That way we know we'll get it to you uh, as many of us uh, are working at home for uh, an indefinite amount of time. So uh, looking over the questions, one of the questions that we often get are is on the uh, coax slide. So we talk about the incandescent light bulb and the LED light bulb, and um, it's more efficient, but if you've ever went and bought an LED light bulb, you know it's a more expensive light bulb. And so how does the cost of a coax compare to uh, a mono film? And uh, we're able to achieve a 25% source reduction. So we're able, for example, on a four mil thick uh, polyfilm, we're able to achieve the same performance both in physical properties and in rust prevention with a three mil thick film. So we're able to do that and also deliver you a five to seven percent cost savings. So it really is a win-win. Most of the uh, poly that we do is with the uh, co-extruded films and um, w w we believe in it and we, we're out there. Most of our stuff on the market is that coax. It does work. We've been doing it since 2005, so it's not new to us. All right, uh, I'll just I'll just kind of end it on, uh, at least from my side, just saying again, thank you. Uh, we're doing this webinar because we get asked by our customers all the time. Uh, this is an initiative that um, has been picking up steam. People are asking, hey, we need to get rid of the RP oils. It's messy. Um, we want to get the oils out of our shop. How can we pack dry parts. So that's what we're all about. We get asked about it, we explain it, and so we wanted to make it available to all. And we truly are 
a green company. We've been that way since 1979, and we just said, hey, uh, in 2020, we're going to start talking about it more. You know, we're clean, safe, and easy, and we mean it. Um, and so uh, we're looking forward to being a part of that solution, and we want to continue being a part of the solution uh, to make uh, the planet uh, and the environment uh, a better place and to preserve it for as long as we can. So um, with that, thank you again, and I'll turn it back over to Kristen. And just to reiterate what Ryan said, a big thank you from myself. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a great afternoon.